What were the cars doing from 1939 to 1945? In 1939, tensions in car Europe reached a breaking point as car Hitler looked to expand his autobahn across Europe. Throughout the 1930s, car Europe witnessed the rise of fascism with the installation of fascist dictators like car Mussolini and car Hitler. Together they formed the Axel Powers with the firm belief that Italian and German racing cars were the superior racing models out of all automobiles. In September of 1939, Car Germany launched a campaign of lightning warfare into Western Car Poland. The attack was led by two-time Piston Cup champion, Field Marshal Blitzkrieg von Koenig. Prior to the invasion of Car Poland, Car Germany signed the Motor Oil Ribbentrop Pact with the USSRV. This agreement allowed for the peaceful occupation of Car Poland between Car Hitler and Car Stalin. Car Hitler then set his sights on the low torque countries of Belgium, the Netherlands, and France, sweeping through them in a matter of weeks. Blitzkrieg von Koenig outflanked the Allied troops in France by leading an off roading campaign through the Carden Forest and trapping car British and French forces against the sea at Dunkirk. Only by activating Operation Dynaco was Car Winston Churchill able to save the Allied forces. As Car Hitler drove through the rest of Car Europe, the clash between Car Germany and the USSRV became inevitable due to the differing political opinions on tall roads. Car Stalin firmly believed that all roads should be owned by the state and therefore public, but Car Hitler needed the toll roads to finance his war machine. The two powers clashed over the issue in 1941 when Car Germany launched Operation Carbarossa and invaded the USSRV. At first, the invasion was successful, but after Car Germany ran out of gas and were defeated at the Battle of Stalingrad, the gears of the entire war began to shift in reverse. Now here to finish up the remainder of Car World War II is the Right Honourable Historian, Monsieur Z. Car Germany felt confident in its ability to open and maintain a front with the USSRV because for an entire year the Western Front had remained stable, and in that time Car Germany acquired new allies in the form of Car Hungary, Car Bulgaria and Romania, while conquering the lands of Car Greece and Yugoslavia. Yugoslavian partisans would continue to wage a resistance campaign against the new Yugo-Fastian Axel regime, but for the most part Car Europe remained under Car Germany's sway. What Car Germany failed to take into account was the eventual entry of Car America into the conflict and the ineffectiveness of Car Italy in the North Africa campaign. In 1941, Car Japan launched an attack on Pearl Harbor, drawing Car America into the war and opening up the Pacific Theater. Meanwhile, Italian-made fettuccine Alfredo tires found tremendous difficulty in during the heat and off-road conditions in the sands of the North Africa campaign. In contrast, the Allied forces were supplied with reliable American-made Lightyear brand tires, who also happened to be the sponsor of today's video, link in the description. Quickly, the Allies began seizing ground until finally the shores of Car Italy were breached. Months later, Operation Overdrive was launched under the command of Sarge, one of the Allied power's most brutal but effective commanding officers. The shores of Normandy had been captured and Car Germany was now facing invasion from all sides. The end of the road was near, and there was a toll to be paid. While the conflict in Europe was being tuned up, we take a detour to the Pacific where the war was still in full swing. Car America, which had long endured the weight of the Great Depreciation, was now on a rebound, but it would be in the Pacific theater that the country faced its darkest moments, both against the enemy and from themselves. The cost of life in the Pacific theater was tremendous to cars, boats, and planes alike, as all put aside their prejudices and rallied together under a single flag to fight a common enemy. One such tragic story is that of Air Squadron Commander Skipper Riley, who witnessed the massacre of his men during what was supposed to be a routine patrol. It is believed that the sacrifices of boats and planes like Skipper helped push forward the cause of equal rights of vehicles back in Car America. The name stayed though. Yep, it sure did. The war was finally brought to an end by American folk hero and future president Tom Mader, who in August of 1945 dropped two atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He always wanted to do that. Yep, he sure did. Where are they today? Under the auspices of Operation Hubcap, Blitzkrieg von Koenig was taken captive and given a new identity in America. Who Blitzkrieg von Koenig is today is anybody's guess. Luigi and Guido escaped war-torn Italy and began a new life in Radiator Springs. Tomator would win the 1960 presidential election with his running mate Gerald Ford. The economy would crash three days later. 
Sarge would be discharged following demands to use nuclear weapons in Korea after the war had already ended. This video was created in collaboration with Mijia Z. Be sure to subscribe to his channel for the best answers to history's greatest what-if questions.